and welcome to another edition of Tosa West News. I'm Star Donaldson. And I'm Erin Stapleton. Wow, we haven't had a show in a while, have we, Star? No, but you know what we've been working on? Our crew has been adding new videos to our website, www.wawatosawest.com. These videos are exclusive to the website, so make sure you check out what you're missing. Also, in honor of Valentine's Day, you and your friends can win a gift to card to Flat Top Grill. Just snap a picture of you and your friends or you and your boo and post it to Tosa West Side Stories wall on Facebook. For more details, go to wawatosawest.com. Well, we've got a great show for our viewers today with a new look into the new Wauwatosa Montessori School, an examination of racial profiling in our area, and segments on upcoming events in our school. First up, reporters Zainab Hassan and Alexandra Zilanka take us back to our younger years with their story on Wauwatosa School District's new Montessori School. Today, in the basement of the Fisher Building, several kids are starting out their day at Wauwatosa Montessori School. You might have heard about the opening of the Montessori School for grades K-4 through 5 this year. There are three classrooms at the school. There is the Children's House, which is usually K-3, K-4, and K-5. But as of right now, it is just K-4 and K-5 at the Wauwatosa Montessori School. Then there is the Lower Elementary, which is the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd grade together. And lastly, there is the Upper Elementary, which is just the 4th and 5th grade. The big difference in terms of how Wauwatosa Montessori School differs from our other district elementary schools is the fact that it's the Montessori methodology that's being used. Um, so if you see some of the materials that are being used for instruction, for instruction um, it's definitely different. Uh, I think when you walk in the classroom you see the materials. Um, I think sometimes when you even just look at the rooms themselves, how they look, uh, it's different from the other elementary buildings or other elementary classrooms. Another unique aspect is that each Montessori classroom has a job chart which reminds each student what their duties are for that day. Responsibilities include taking care of pets, cleaning up messes, picking up after yourself, and also watering plants. The teaching style in a Montessori school is different than a traditional in that each child um, is working on their own pace and each child is expected to um, get their work accomplished in their own order. But work is the expectation, so they cannot just sit and fool around. Their job is to get their jobs finished, but I'm not the one telling them when to do it. Um, we're trying to give them um, some confidence and understand how to self-direct. This isn't to say that kids aren't able to interact with one another. They still get many opportunities to work together on their projects. Um, the Montessori classroom, each classroom has their certain way of setting things up, but particularly in a children's house classroom, we try to gear things to make everything accessible for the child so that that can foster their independence. The tables are smaller, the chairs are smaller, everything is sort of... Um, small basically yeah the word small and it's as if you're in um, Gulliver's Travels and you've just landed in the land of the Lilliputians because you're very small. With all of its differences and a unique enrichment for students who is to say that the Montessori methodology is not the key to better preparing students for the future right here in Wauwatosa. Oh so sweet I remember being that young getting nap time those were the days but this next story is far from cute. Zakia Robinson exposes the shocking reality of racial profiling at a local level.
racial profiling is the whole viewing of someone, whether it's the legal way in which you've got law enforcement belie being believed to act with some people based on race or ethnicity, or the general conversation where we have certain expectations that because a person belongs to a particular race or ethnic uh, group, that they're going to act in certain ways. Probably the best example of that is the desire or the feeling that certain uh, real estate, uh, excuse me, uh, certain businesses feel the need to follow certain people around, is that we think this is the person most likely to steal. And so we'll have to keep an eye on them. Or there may be somebody over here just cleaning the place out, but doggone it, they looked real preppy. The people who are being hurt don't have the power to stop it. And so I think that it's really great if people would be nice to each other and if we could increase the awareness of people and we could increase the educational sensitivity of people. But I think what really solves things is that people have, can defend themselves. And as long as they cannot defend themselves, then this is going to happen. But when you really think about it, it affects all of us. Uh, not just uh, people of color, but you have to think that it also should affect white people. And not that I'm saying that they get pulled over, but is that when you see that, you put that thought into non-Hispanic or non-black, you know, white people that, oh, they should have stopped them because they don't belong here. So you are saying that it's okay for that to happen. After all of the strides we've made as a society to get past such issues as racial profiling, it's unfortunate that it's still a problem today. United by a common passion, we can try to work for change. Along the lines of collaboration, we would like to introduce our latest segment, The Latest, an overview and update of the, all the collaborative efforts at Tosa West. The Wauwatosa Hurricanes hosted the Bob White Invitational on January 28th and finished 6th. Tony Benz, Caleb Herndey, Eddie Galindo, and Jack Lutz all led the team with top sixth place finishes. Tony Benz had the highest with fourth in diving with a new point record, 303.35. Also, the 200 and 400 freestyle relays, which consisted of Max Bravarni, Jake Lutz, Peter Havel, and Caleb Herndey, all finished in the top six. Coach Michael Che says, we've consistently been placing about fourth or fifth in all of the meets we've been to. Overall, we've had a pretty successful season. So far, the boys have gone 3-2 in their conference and 4-2 overall. Sectionals are Friday and Saturday at Nicolet High School. And their state meet will be at UW-Madison on February 18th. The boys basketball team has gone 2-10 so far in their conference and 2-14 overall. On January 31st, they had a close game against Greenfield, only losing by a small amount. West received outstanding plays from freshman Andre Carroll, who scored 21 points, had 9 rebounds, and 5 steals. Sam Clough also played very well versus a much bigger Greendale team with 7 rebounds. The Trojans also got balanced scoring from Stephen Brown and J.J. Belknap with eight apiece and Blake Harvey and Will Watkins with six apiece. The boys will be at Whitnall on February 10th and on February 17th they will play Greendale. The girls have been working hard too. As of February 3rd, the girls basketball maintained a record of 6-6 in conference and 6-8 overall. Recently, the girls won a big victory, 47-41, in a battle with Greendale. The Trojans out-hustled the Panthers all game and were led by point guard Jenna Engel and got strong minutes from Latasha Harmon, J. 
Jessica Pike, and Jenna Lahman. Down the stretch, the girls were in complete control and finished the game strong. Senior Nyresha Williams-Torrance says, We've had some really close games with elite teams in the state. We need to work on closing out games and playing with the same level of intensity throughout the game. To support our Lady Trojans, their next games are this Friday and next Tuesday here at West. And a big congratulations is in order for the wrestling team. As of February 3rd, their standing record is 6-1. Recently, the boys dominated Greendale, 60-12. Winning decisions were Kai Castaneda, Max Nelson, Alex Comte, and Larry Bryant. Divine Davis comments, so far we're having a good season. We've only lost one meet to Pewaukee. The next wrestling meets are this Saturday at Nicolay, and sectionals are next Saturday at Oconomowoc High School. Now to star with the latest on Arts at West. The next show from the Tro Trojan players, Harvey, opens Friday and runs through Sunday. Come see this hilarious production about alcoholism, insanity, and an imaginary giant rabbit. Gallery 114 is now accepting applications for a show called A World of Art. This is designed to correspond with West's multicultural fair work inspired by cultures, languages, and family heritage. Applications can be picked up in any art room or the main office. All applications are due February 24th. The multicultural fair itself will kick off Thursday, March 29th from 6 until 8.30. Ms. Shimmons, our acting associate principal, will be teaching Tosa West students an ethnic dance for the fair. If you're interested in learning the dance, please talk to Mrs. Shimmons in the main office or Senora Patria's in room 282. Well, that's all we have for today with the latest and our broadcast. I'm Erin Stapleton. And I'm Star Donaldson. Have a great day and a sweet Valentine's Day, Tosa West. <laughs>